All right, it is September 14th, 2023, and we are gathered here today <laughs> to talk about improving accessibility in the site editor. Um, this is a hallway hangout. We have folks from across the community and I'm pretty sure across the world um, here to talk about this. And as part of this session, I am really stoked that Joe and Alex have agreed to help demo some stuff as part of kind of getting the conversation going. Um, so you can actually see some of the stuff that's going on and actually explore it um, on this call. And this will be recorded, obviously, as we're recording now and recapped on Make Test, um, if you would like to dig into that later. Um, but for now, I would love if I can pass it off maybe first to you, Alex, to introduce yourself and then um, to Joe. Uh, my name is Alex. I consider myself to be somewhat good at accessibility. And I work as a DevOps engineer outside of WordPress. Awesome. Joe. So I'm Joe Dalson. I'm a, a longtime contributor to WordPress accessibility and a core committer. And uh, I'm here to kind of help illustrate uh, some of the experiences Alex will have in the full site editor so that we can uh, just talk about what the experience is like and how that works for somebody who's fully blind. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, if you all want to just start demoing, let me make sure you all have permission to share screen and everything like that. Yeah, you should be good to go. All right. Well, Alex, why don't you just dive in? Uh, we've set up a very simple site to work on. It's just running the, the current nightly from WordPress 6.4, Gutenberg, uh, latest release, and uh, the current state of 2024. So we're not testing 2024, <laughs> Carlina. It's, it's fine. This is all about the site editor. So Alex, why don't you just go ahead and get started, share your screen, and we'll um, dive in on some site editing. So I promise I'll slow this down once we start. Now, if anyone can actually understand this, please be the first to announce yes. Took me about six months. I think we decided the round there was good for this. 40 is nice and stable. Yeah. Ash for hallway hangout 2023-09 list with two items link library. Add new page list with two add new comments link appearance list with two editor link. We'll go ahead and open the editor. Editor hallway hangout 2023-09-14. WordPress document now displaying. Log home template editor hallway hangout 2023-09-14. WordPress blank. You are currently in edit mode. To return to the navigation mode, press escape. Looking for template parts. Find some patterns. Log home template editor hallway hangout 2023-09-14. WordPress. Mm. So obviously one of the first experiences we observe is just how verbose that was for Alex in terms of just the sheer volume of information he got immediately on entering. And a large volume of descriptive information can be valuable in some cases, but when you look at this as the experience you're going to have every single time you open the, the editor, it can be a little overwhelming. You want to talk about that a little bit, Alex? So this is actually partially my fault because I was uh, one of the early people who helped implement these features, but it also at the time did not have this many notifications. It used to very simply announce kind of what page you were on so that way you had the context of where you were since it wasn't always clearer due to lack of heading structure back then. Now it's just a little redundant and too much. So it's probably a good time to evaluate stripping some of this out. So obviously, this is, I think we have a question. No, just, just to inform you that I created a, an issue on GitHub about this. Great. About, oh, about okay. the amount of announcements that you get as soon as you open the editor, which are also inappropriate because some of these announcements uh, relate to the editor state navigation mode or browser mode which is actually what happens in the editor instead as soon as you enter here you have the browser view of the editor 
which is different. So those announcements should happen only when you switch to actually edit view. Nothing. And I think that's a big part of the, the challenge in this whole application is that distinction between the edit view and the browse and navigation view, uh, which really have to be treated as very much separate views because you're you're not interacting with them in it all the same way. Yeah. And and don't confuse that with the options under the tools menu, which are also considered modes of editing. Exactly. And selecting. <laughs> At any rate, naming, naming is confusing because the editor uh, has always had since a few years the mode under the tools, right? So under the tools you have uh, edit and how it is called, I don't remember, two modes basically. They related to the editor when you actually edit. Instead, the site editor added this initial view, which has the navigation on the left and a sort of preview iframe uh, and the announcement basically overlaps they happen at the same time and they are inappropriate so as soon as you enter you are overwhelmed by announcements sent to the live regions and some of them are should not should not happen at this moment at any rate, so that gives us yep. the sense of what is our experience the moment we enter this whole process. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to try and actually perform some tasks. Um, and we're, we're focusing on kind of basic tasks, the kinds of tasks that anybody who's just trying to start up a brand new site is going to particularly want to be doing. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go and manage the navigation menu. Um, I have pre-populated it with a few pages, but it isn't exactly what Alex might want. It's, it's still got sample page in it. So why don't we have Alex go through and see what he can do in terms of editing that menu and removing that sample page. Hallway handout 2020 slick view site opens in a new tab, button open command palette, navigation region link go to the dashboard, heading level one design, customize the appearance of your website using the block editor, list with five items button navigation. Button, log home, template editor, hallway, handout 2023-09-14, WordPress, Mozilla Firefox, private browsing, now displaying, log home, template editor, hallway, handout 2023-09-14, WordPress, log home, tab, region, button, open, command, palette, navigation, region, button, back, heading, level 1, navigation, menu, button, collapse, sub-menu, actions, link, edit. Navigation menus are a curated collection of blocks that allow visitors to get around your site. Application block navigation structure. Button unavailable, collapse, saved. Out of region editor, content, region, button, editor, canvas, blank. Button out of Apple Nav menu button collapse heading level menu button collapse sub menu actions link edit. T. Let's start with the edit link, maybe. You are currently in edit mode. To return to the navigation mode, press escape. Now displaying navigation, navigation editor hallway handout 2023-09-14. WordPress, welcome to the site editor dialog. Heading level one edit your site. Design everything on your site. Click graphic styles to start designing your blog. Button get started. Button get started. Navigation, navigation editor hallway handout 2023-09-14. WordPress, Mozilla Firefox private browsing. Uh, not sure that was supposed to happen, but it did. So that was obviously a lot of information. And Alex is already was struggling from the beginning just to figure out what you actually do to edit the navigation. There was a lot of navigation information, and it was kind of difficult to determine exactly what part of that was going to trigger editing. But then obviously going to it, that was an enormous amount of verbosity. Um, I'm not totally certain what was triggering all of that, um, but it's definitely the kind of thing that makes it a little overwhelming to try and figure out what you're doing. Oh, and then it lost focus. Browser I was going to say, I think there's a focus loss situation going on. Browser tabs, browser yeah. navigation, navi editor content, region, drag to resize. Out of region button, open navigation. Open navigation button. Editor top bar region, document tools, toolbar, toggle block inserter, toggle button, not press, editing navigation menu, navigation CTRLK button. View menu button unavailable collapse save button unavailable settings toggle button not press collapse styles toggle options menu button save panel region open save panel button collapse editor content region editor canvas frame editor canvas document block navigation document navigation menu navigation okay so it's pretty labor intensive to navigate back to where you were if there's a focus loss so those are definitely really important things to keep track of uh, and make sure anytime you're opening a new area like this that focus needs to be set we need to establish for, for certain exactly where that should be landing. 
So explore this. Drag uh, button, use left and right arrow keys to resize the canvas. Drag to resize button, use left and right arrow keys to resize the canvas. Editor for the region, lock breadcrumb list, template button. Browser tabs, toolbar, tab, browser, editor can drag to resize canvas frame, editor canvas document, lock, navigation document, navigation menu, navigation. Yeah, I don't know what to do with it. Save panel region. Open. I see a navigation block, but it gives me no information about what to do with it. So let's see. <laughs> now the content inside here. Uh, this is so this is a page list, which means it's synced, which is probably why you can't edit the actual information. Um, but you should in some way be able to figure out how to get to the block tools for that menu, which should give you an option to edit. I don't know exactly how you do that. So see if you can try and find a way to get to that. Oh, you've got it. I can see it. Yeah, I knew how to get here. I was trying to illustrate a point. <laughs> exactly. So talk about a little bit about the point you were illustrating. So the point I was illustrating is the fact that keyboard users don't necessarily know that pressing right arrow would focus another block because visually you can obviously see there's more than one block on this page, but the non-visual users, it's just, it's hidden. It's the, there's just nothing that tells you that. And there was a question that came up on an earlier PR today that I responded to before this meeting and it was, what is the difference between Gutenberg and Tiny MCE? It's slightly off topic, but if you actually look at the way that Tiny MCE is structured, it's one field. And then everything is contained within one field, where in a block type situation like this, there can be multiple different elements in the canvas that you're working with. It's not one constant flowing canvas. So this makes it very, very challenging to communicate when a block has inner blocks and exactly how you get to those. I would take some issue with your statement that it's obvious visually that there are multiple blocks here. Um, I, I do not agree that that is true. I would I not just be able to tell that. But obviously I can't verify. Indeed. But. That is a it is a very important point that trying to determine where these block boundaries are, what is a block and what isn't, is actually quite difficult. And that's going to be true both sided and non-sided. Um, why don't you continue on and let's move forward to edit this. Block tools toolbar, page list menu button, collapse submenu page list, so change block type. I'm assuming maybe there's an edit button in here. Move left button, move right edit button. Well, there is. Edit page list dialog. This page list assists with the published pages on your site. Detach the page list to add, delete, or reorder pages yourself. Heading level one edit page list. So I don't actually know what that means. I did I mean, find I... this is somewhat of a confusing description of exactly Heading what's going to happen. Button, and the idea page that you're detaching the page list, uh, to me, that was just a confusing way of describing what you're going to do. So I'm, I'm going to be honest, like I've contributed to WordPress for seven years and I couldn't begin to tell you what that means. I'm going to tell you, I, I do understand what it means. And what it is literally meaning is that you are making it so that the the pages in the page list are now part of an independent menu rather than sourcing it from just a page list function that's pulling in those pages uh, just as a list of pages. So you are you're detaching the default fallback for WP nav menu and pulling it in as a set of independent link blocks within this thing. Um, oh. But the the description of of detaching it, uh, I feel is it's very confusing. I mean, it yeah. wasn't immediately obvious to me what that meant. I had to work it out. Um, it feels like it should just say, do you want to convert this to link blocks? I think that would probably be more clear. It seems like Andrea has a point to make. Yeah, that the language used in this dialogue is a bit hard to understand also for all users, I would say. Yes, I would. The I mean, average, I would absolutely say it's all users. Yeah, the average user doesn't really know what detaching is. 
I think, right? So the the wording should be simplified a lot here. Just as an example of an accessibility usability issue for all users. So exactly. for the yeah. moment though, in for order to be able to do some thing. editing. We uh, have to do this. Yep. Uh, and I also see that it looks like Rich has a, has a comment. Yeah, I was going to say, um, I think the intent behind this was to simulate this flow with synced patterns and how you detach a sync pattern from all the rest. That makes much more sense. Whereas here, yeah, I agree. It doesn't make sense. And yeah, to me, it's not very clear here. It. Yeah. Yeah. It does, yeah, it's not quite the same. It, it is technically the same thing, but I think usability wise, like understanding what it is, it's yeah. different. Sometimes what's technically going on in the background is not necessarily what you want to expose exactly. to the user which this is also mm -hmm. like the sync patterns things is currently in place and i just got feedback on that recently so i expect that yeah i'll follow up and open an issue on this for both the it's navigation definitely a language thing yes so let's go ahead and detach this main landmark editor content region editor canvas frame editor canvas document block navigation document navigation menu navigation okay so focus wasn't lost that's good but again still doesn't tell us what's going on here Block page link document. This is a page link. Navigation link text edit multi line about us. B O U about us. About us. Okay, this is a text. Blank. Block page link document. Blank. Block page link document. Navigation link text edit multi line portfolio. O portfolio. Blank. Block page link document. Blank. Block page link document. Still haven't actually figured out where the link is. So I think because these are page links, the, the link is actually inherent in what type of link it is. It's always going to link to that page, whatever the URL is for that page, wherever you change it, if you're editing that page. So I don't think you'd have an option to edit the link per se in this context. You could remove the link. But it and doesn't that, actually, I mean, it tells us what the display title is, but it doesn't tell us what the name of the page is or any reference to what this is. Because I guess you could give these custom names. Yeah, you're you're in a context right now where you can change the text of the link. Um, and I, I do agree, there's not a lot of context given here for what you're actually linking to, because of course, these are links to a page, but if that has already been edited at some point, so it doesn't directly correlate to the title of any page, I don't know how you'd be able to tell that. Um, is there more context you can get about this? Block page link document, block page link document, blank. Main landmark editor content region edit out of edit navigation link text edit multi-line sample page. Out of edit navigation link text edit multi-line subscribe. Yeah, not that I can see. So like in the traditional nav menu, the admin nav menu editor, you can get a lot of information about the whatever link you're currently working on. Because it... you can expand that box. It gives you a whole bunch of information about what the URL is, where it's pointing to, and other factors about that link. Um, so I do feel like this is something where the information available to the user is much more limited and it's presuming that the user already has pre-existing knowledge about this menu which especially in a multi-editor environment the person who's actually editing this isn't necessarily the person who created it in the first place uh, so i think there's some context problems here in terms of being able to understand what's going on and i would observe that there there is tons of space in this canvas so you know, visually, it would not be difficult to provide some additional information. Yeah, agreed. Why don't you go ahead and try and remove the sample page? So I'm going to cheat and go into navigation mode. Custom this can be block. one of the downsides oh, to working Actually, with somebody who knows no. the code really well. Navigation block, custom link block, column one, about us, custom link block, column one, about Custom link block, column two, portfolio, custom link block, column three, sample page, custom link block, custom link block, column two, portfolio. And it's gone. There we go. So why don't we save this? Editor footer region, editor top bar region, document tools, editing map, view menu button, and save button collapsed. Expanded, save panel region, save button. 
Yeah, it opens up a panel to save, but it doesn't tell me what's in it. I'm not. Button cans, are you ready to save? The following changes have been made to your site, templates, and content. Yeah, that would have all been nice to know without actually having to go manually read it. Heading level 2 button expanded navigation menus. Checkbox check navigation. Out of region editor content region button custom out of region save panel region well, checkbox check navigation. Checkbox do can you revert the changes from here? I think you can choose not to save those changes. It doesn't oh. I don't believe it reverts them, it just opts not to save them. Yeah, there's an issue about that where it's kind of a confusing I think it's a confusing experience right now. It's stripped up some folks where it doesn't actually um discard them. So you would basically constantly be met with the like you can save, you can save, you can save. So it doesn't actually get rid navigation of it. Cancel button. Navigation menus button, expand save button. Editor top bar region Savi button unavailable collapsed. Yeah, I think, and I think that that needs to be made save. extremely navigation clear. Block, row one. Editor it, content region navigation block, row one button. It needs to be set up such that uh, it doesn't just magically either choose not to discard them or discard them. It should actually be an, an option. Somebody can choose, uh, I'm going to discard these changes. I do not want these changes. Save panel region open, save now panel I feel like that's left. rather difficult. Editor content region navigation block, row one button. Wow, so, that was very interesting. So I think I actually just found a new bug. Oh, great. That's so what these are for. If you are in navigation mode and you actually save the site editor changes, it instead of focusing the save button again, it focuses the first button in navigation mode. That is definitely not an expected behavior. No, that sounds rather strange. And Definitely, that's very a, hard to read. Anytime you do something like save, the focus should stay where you are. Um, um, save editor top bar region options menu button collapse sub menu save panel region open save panel button. I have a feeling it's because the button changed to open save panel and React couldn't figure out the difference. <laughs> Is that the same button? It looks um, like it. I assume it is. Editor, style, toggle, button, not settings, save button, unavailable. No, it isn't. It's, it's not. No, it's a separate down. button. But it's doing the same thing. Um, but how do we end up from like this save button right there all the way down to block na the navigation? Well, that sounds like something that needs to get explored outside of this particular session. Um, oh, for sure. Just highlight. That's an, <laughs> an interesting experience. Certainly. So we're going to move on from the navigation menu. You can see that there's there's some context switching issues there. There are definitely some confusion issues about exactly what are you doing and how do you move between different modes here. Um, obviously, it's possible to do it. Um, it's just labor intensive. So let's go ahead and let's have Alex replace the site logo in the header. View menu button of editing document tool toolbar. Open navigation button. You are currently in edit mode. To return to the navigation view site, opens in a new tab. Open command palette button. Navigation region back button. Actions menu button collapse sub menu. Back button. Back button now displaying. Actions menu button collapse edit link. Block navigation structure. Block navigation structure table. Page link not select. So I'm going to observe that that back button would really be helped by giving some kind of context of what it's going to go back to. Um, I'm not sure that that's really super obvious. And the same notices are right again. Cool. <laughs> Navigation button. Stop. Pages button. Templates button. Patterns button. Dismiss this notice button. Templates button. So because I have knowledge of WordPress, I would assume that I would find what I'm looking for under templates. Now displaying. Log home template editor. Add new template button. Back button. Add list with 13 items. All archives button. Log home button. Home writer button. This should probably not be individual tab stops, maybe. This could take a long time, depending on how many templates you have. Index button, page no title button, page port, page writer, page four, pages button, search results button, single post button, single with sidebar button, single writer, content info, landmark, map, save button, unavailable. Oh, I'm not going to find header under here. You are currently in navigation mode. Map, save button, content, list with third, single with, single, search, page, page, page right, page port, page no type, index button, home writer, log home button, all archives button, add new template button, back button. I don't understand this at all. So does anybody have any suggestions for Alex about where he might go to edit the header? If you go back from here and then into patterns. Looking for template parts, patterns button. 
Back button. Create pattern menu button collapse submenu. List with one item by pattern zero button current. List with ten items standards two button. Text date button. That says my pattern zero. That's so. because you don't have any patterns that you've created. Um, but I can see that that could be a little bit confusing to somebody if that's the first thing they encounter is the statement that they don't have any patterns. Um, There's an issue, I think, around improving that like empty state. Um, I'll, I'll link to I'm taking notes, by the way. I wanted to mention that as we're yeah. going through this, including like follow up actions. I think patterns this is, a, this is also a case where there's an element uh, where it's good to have context of how many things you're going to be looking at. So even having a summary up there, my patterns, zero, uh, theme patterns, 19, it would give you good context of like what you're going to be going through, what is actually present. Um, I will say, uh, and so I did look ahead to see where this was going to go. Um, Alex, what you're going to be looking for in here, there's going to be, a, uh, I think it's, it might be a heading. Let me just check. A heading that says template parts, and then under that is where you'll find header. Um, I will say it's immediately a little bit off-putting to me to find template parts under patterns and not under templates. Um, uh, since, yeah. I mean, the word template is is already in there. And, you know, as WordPress developers, we're accustomed to working with templates and theme templates and template parts within the theme. Uh, it, it feels odd to find them under patterns. Also, why is header a template part? No, no note... that, that's actually pretty standard, um, but. Yeah. I just want to note here that part of the confusing confusion that has come up in the past with the outreach program is the differentiation between template parts um, and patterns and reusable blocks and all these sorts of things. And so part of, I think the push to patterns is eventually having template parts be more seen as like an umbrella under patterns, but I agree that that needs to be communicated. Like we're in an in-between state right now. Um, I mean, it could be as simple as something it within, when you're navigating templates to have a link that sends you over to template parts, and that could just land you in mm -hmm. the patterns that are template parts. But the, the difficult thing there is figuring out how to find these things. Um, so, I just yeah, my brain associates too much with like <clears throat> the old way of development. So I just think of okay, header.php. Great. Header template. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Which is technically a template into, part. But yeah, you could go because into it's a, a partial edit the header too. Like that is also an option um from that experience. But yeah, I agree. Like I understand what you're saying there. List with three items, button header, button one, button header, E. Button one, button footer, button one, button header. Current, current. Button current one. Button footer, button three. Yeah, we. Well, I can probably... see you select it, but it didn't move you anywhere. It didn't take you to a context where you actually find this header. Button, button two. Out of list content info landmark list with two items link manage all of my patterns. I definitely don't expect that to be in a content info landmark. Button manage all template parts. Out of list button unavailable collapse saved. Out of region patterns content region heading level 2 header. The header template defines a page area that typically contains a title, logo, and main navigation. Search patterns. Edit. List button header. List. List heading level 5 button header. List menu button collapse submenu actions. List action menu for header pattern. Why is this all wrapped in a list? I don't understand. Out of region notifications. Notice no the main landmark patterns content region list action menu for header pattern. Search patterns edit. Alright, let's do this. Patterns can... Header list the header template defines a page area that typically contains a title, logo, and main navigation. Header button. Actions menu button collapse header button. I think the list would make more sense if there were multiple header patterns button. present. Um, in theory, this is a list of different header patterns. In this case, there is a only one. Header template part editor hallway hangout 2023-09-14. WordPress log home template editor hallway hangout 2023-09-14. WordPress document main landmark navigation region back button. All right. Edit button. Save button unavailable. Edit button. You are currently in edit mode. To return to the navigation mode, press escape. Now displaying header template part editor hallway hangout 2023-09-14. WordPress header template part editor hallway hangout 2023-09-14. WordPress document. Yeah, we just simply don't manage focus here. That's it's exactly the same problem as what happened yep. last time. So it's it's consistent at least. Row one. Editor content region. Group Which... block. Row one button. All right. So. Group block. Column. Group block. Row one. I start. 
editing and the first thing I get is a group block. Block column one, group block column one. Site logo block column one, site logo block column one. Oh, here's our site logo. You are currently in edit mode. To return to the navigation mode, press escape, add a site logo button. Were we supposed to add a site logo or remove the existing? There isn't one existing, so you can just add one. It's fine. Delete or upload media dialog. I put one image off. in just you so that you can have to hide. Mod logo, just one checkbox. Check, check. Delete permanently. Copy URL. Select button. Button. Main landmark. Editor content region. Editor canvas frame. Editor canvas document. So this clearly worked fairly smoothly once Alex was able to locate where you can even find the template parts, which was a bit challenging. It, it is noticeable that it's confusing when the first thing you encounter is just an abstractly unnamed group block. Um, I don't know if the work on renaming blocks is something that we can actually pre-populate. So within a theme, mm -hmm. define this region as having a name. I do think that would probably make it easier to understand the context of some of these things. Like renaming um, the group block? Yeah, exactly. Describing? Yeah, that's so that that this group hurt. could have a name of, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. I don't know. Yeah, that did just get merged, but I don't know how it announces it. So, like, I know it shows up in the list view, but we did yep. just I don't know how that works either. Before. Yeah, yeah, that would be a good thing to test at some point. But it's the sort of thing that because there's a lot of groups in here. I mean, these these sites are very complex. There's lots of patterns, lots of things. So you're going to encounter group over and over and over again, and it gives you very little context of what is this group. Now, it it, it is worth pointing out that uh, the reason why I want to do away with the uh, different modes in Gutenberg, because I personally think the list view is a better representation. Yep. Block navigation structure, block navigation structure table, group not selected, row one, column so one, group link expanded, this, block one to one, level one. And I don't want to see anything under here. I can just... Collapsed. And be done with it. And if I want to see something, we can expanded. expand. Row not selected. Row two. Row link expanded. Block one to one. Level working two. Working down the list until I get to what I'm looking for. Where you never really know which way to press your <laughs> arrow keys to navigate around in the canvas. So, the canvas. Yeah, I mean, this is something that I I find very difficult in navigating the canvas using the keyboard is the fact that uh, it's very unpredictable what direction you will be traveling based on what you select. Whereas, because everything is fundamentally linear. I mean, the DOM is linear. And I think that those key presses within the visual editor should probably just follow the DOM, um, because that is actually the order things are in, regardless of where they seem like they're uh, appearing. It would make it a little bit more, have a more a bit more parity with the list well, view, which I agree is a much easier way of navigating. So uh this is another area where I've actually examined the code around and I kind of like understand why it's done this way. Because if you press down arrow, because I mean, the DOM is up and down, right? It is. That's true. And so, that means left and right end up having no meaning, which is well, going to be confusing that, to a sighted user. What that also means is if you have like a bunch of inner blocks at one point, you have to go through each and every one of those inner blocks before you can get to the blocks below it. It's true. So it's, so it's a difficult, it's, it's, yep. there's no question this is a difficult problem. We're not trying to, to minimize the fact that these things are hard to solve. But I think what I would like to see is, you know, we, we have a way that we can move around with arrow keys in the canvas. We also have a navigation mode and an edit mode, and we have a list view. I think we have too many things at play here, and we should try to simplify because the list view is a very accessible representation of what's happening in the editor, in my opinion, anyway. We have a comment from Andrea. Uh, regarding this point, uh, I would tend to agree that we should evaluate if some of the accessibility features we implemented in the past are still useful now that we have blocks with inner blocks. For example, Alex was mentioning navigation mode and edit mode in the editor. That was added when there were no inner blocks. <coughs> and basically the post editor had only a list of blocks, right? 
there were no inner blocks at the time. And it was a way to try to simplify navigation between blocks. But the structure of the blocks was way simpler because it was just one level of blocks without inner blocks. Now that in, post, in the post editor we have inner blocks and in the site editor is even more complicated because as Joe was mentioning, you can navigate a group in different directions with keystrokes. It's very, very complicated also for sided users. It's, it's complicated to select blocks inside a group, especially when there's a lot of nested groups. Uh, I think we should probably reevaluate if navigation edit mode still makes sense and whether we should use something else. Alex mentioned that the list view, right? Alex is maybe the only place that gives you both visually and in, in an accessible way, an idea of the structure of the blocks, right? Yes. So the problem with the list view is that it is placed in, in the top bar. So when you're working on a block or in a group with inner blocks or whatever, nested blocks, et cetera. To actually have a representation of the block structure, we have to move to the top bar, open the list view, navigate to the list view, and basically go away from the blocks where you were editing. And then go back again to the blocks. So the but shortcut. Yeah. actually moves focus back now. Yeah, the list that view was... is global, let's say. The list view is global so far. It yeah. shows the entire structure of the blocks. Uh, I, I'm wondering if we could build something different like a list view that shows only the subtree of the block you're working with. And it shows you this in line in the block toolbar. So that so, was actually done for the navigation block. Ah, uh, sort of. Just imagine that you're working on a block and you move to the block toolbar and you have a button that opens a list view that represents only the tree of that block. You could actually move very easily through the inner blocks that make part of that block or that group because you have this tool in line in the block toolbar. Yeah, and I think that makes a lot of sense. And it represents yeah. only the subtree of that block. I see yeah, we Yon. have a, a comment from Yoan as well. Yeah, because I was like, he can probably expand on some of the stuff that's been done yeah. there. Yeah. It is for keyboard users and screen reader users would be very useful, I think, but it would be also useful for, I mean, visually, because you would have immediately in the block toolbar a button that opens a visual representation of the structure of that block or of that group. Only the subtree of that block. This is something I was wondering about since a few weeks, but I haven't created an issue yet. <laughs> uh, what do you uh, What do you have to say about that, Johan? So right. So I may want to. Sorry, the question I would like to ask to Alex now: What if we implemented such a subtree with the list view that shows only the subtree and blah blah blah, and completely remove navigation and edit mode? Yeah, so we can let's let's hold on that question. I think it's a good idea, but let's uh who wanted to speak and then you I want to show you wanted to say, yeah. I want to show something right after this that might help put this together. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. This is Yoan here. I, I'll I'll be very brief. Um I'm mainly here to listen and get inspiration from from all the feedback. Uh, so what what we are uh, witnessing here on screen is editing just the header template part. Um, it's shown in sort of an isolated view, which shows just the subtree 
of of the header, uh, just this one group. Um, we've in various GitHub issues referred to this as focus mode or isolated view. Th those are are not good terms. We need to find something better. But the idea is that you zoom in on just that part of the page and show just the list view for that part of uh, of the, the system. In this case, the the header group. I would love to see that for every nested block have yeah. a tool, whether in the block toolbar or somewhere else that allows you to isolate just that part of the page and edit just that. It could be uh, uh, an edit button in the ellipsis menu in the block toolbar, or it could be uh, a button in the toolbar. It depends on you know prominence and making sure it's in a useful place. But essentially that would theoretically let you click a group, click this button and have only the subtree for that group. Edit it just like we see here, just like we see here for the template part, but available for any any container block, columns, groups, row, stack, anything like that. Yeah. There is an issue for that. I'll see if I can find the link, but I just wanted to connect those dots with showing a sub uh, subtree of the list view. Okay, so uh, a couple couple things worth highlighting. Row not selected, site logo select, group not selected, row five, navigation not selected, row six, navigation link collapsed block two of two, level. Here's our navigation block. Let's just go ahead and press enter here. Selected, editor content region, editor canvas frame, editor canvas document, block, group document. And now we're back in our navigation block. One of the things that I worked very hard to implement was the shortcut to actually return you to the sidebar. Block navigation structure, block navigation structure table, navigation selected, navigation link collapsed, block two of two, level three. Because before you would have to region navigate back and it was a real pain. And then the shortcut, of course, while in the sidebar will close the sidebar. Editor content region, editor canvas frame, editor canvas document. Which we have a focus problem with at the moment, but there is a fix underway. Um, Let's go ahead and save these changes and then I'll show one more thing. Editor footer region, editor top bar region. Document editing temp view menu, but save button collapsed. Expanded, save panel region, save button. Editor top bar region, saving button unavailable collapsed. Site updated. Oh, actually, yeah, I don't know why I went through the trouble. There was a navigation block here. I was just on it. Block navigation, row not selected, row, group not selected, row, row not selected, navigation selected, row four. Nav Let's go here. Row navigation selected. Oh, it's not going to let us focus on it because it's already selected. Row editor content region. Edit Let's do this. Block navig navigation not Selected, editor content region, editor canvas frame, editor canvas document, block, group document, block, row document, block, navigation document, navigation menu, navigation. So navigation. Drag to resize button, use left and right arrow, drag to resize, editor footer region, block breadcrumb list, template button. Oh, do we not have the sidebar in here? Group button. Where is the sidebar? Row button. Select files button. Browser tabs toolbar, main landmark, editor, editor top bar region. Document editing template view menu button save button of settings toggle button not press collapsed. Oh, that is not good. That is something we don't have a problem <laughs> with in the post editor. Press expanded. So what is the problem exactly that you're illustrating here? The problem is that the sidebar is open once you select a block in the post editor and it's not in the side editor, which ah. causes you to have to navigate all the way back up to activate a button that's so far away in the DOM, it's not even... It's not even really funny. No, it's Navigate hilarious. Region. I mean, it's sort of hilarious. Save panel region. List view region. So to summarize, the problem the here is that in the, in the post editor, anytime you're editing a block, it just kind of automatically opens up that side panel. So you have access to all of those block related tools. And that same thing is not happening in the site editor, um, which is a problem because of how much labor it is to actually open that panel if it's not open for the block. It's it's a lot of navigating all the way around the site to get to that control. If anyone wants to fix it, it's in that terribly old WordPress interface package. Good luck. Uh, all right, so. Editor settings region. The sidebar is finally here. List template button. Block selected, but close settings button. Here is the block tab, which is selected. Tab control, list view, tab selected, and one of three. here is the list view for the navigation block. List view property page. Navigation menu button collapsed submenu. Block navigation structure, block navigation structure, table structure for navigation menu. Navigation, page link not selected, row one, column one. Page link, link block one of three, level one. Page link not selected, page link not selected, row three. Page link, link block three of three, level one. 
So it shows all the inner blocks of the navigation block. Yeah, I mean, I think having something comparable to that for all blocks would be very potentially quite useful. I agree. Yep. Just wanted to show that we do have it, at least for the navigation block. We just need to expand it. So I presume that we need to get abstracted because that's probably pretty specific. Yep. But the good news is, is we kind of already have the basic flow down. So yeah. that's a step in the right direction. Well, good to know. <sighs> um, I will just, I just want to mention one of my own personal pet peeves about the list view that has been annoying me is the fact that it no longer indicates heading level. I believe at one time it would indicate what level of heading it was in the list view, and now it just says heading, um, which I find irritating. Understandable. I would like to be able to tell what my headings hierarchy was, and I cannot, I don't have any visibility of that. Does anyone know why that might have changed or unclear? Okay. I, I don't, I don't recall a change to uh, the removing headings, but I do know that there is a document outline where if there yeah. are headings in the document, heading two, three, four, five, there's a there's a separate tab that shows you the heading hierarchy and highlights. It might it. be that what I'm I'm remembering that tool and not realizing they've never actually been in the list view. But it would be extremely useful in the list view since that that view is frankly more useful than the document outline. Are we talking about the outline in the list view? Editor top bar region, save button unavailable. Which is not available uh, on the side editor, I don't think. Block navigation structure. I don't, I don't remember. No, it isn't here. Editor top. I believe it appears when there are headings in the document. Yeah, there are no headings in this particular view, so. Oh, yes, that's true. We want okay. to navigate back to the templates. We can jump into a, a editing, template. Editing, open, open navigation, editor template, main Actually, landmark, editor top, open navigation, button. you are currently in edit mode. Search, search, blue site, open, open command palette, navigation region, back button, back button, create pattern menu, back button, Pre list my pattern, zero button, list banner, two button, text date button. We probably need to actually be in templates. List, create pattern menu, back button, looking for template parts, find, dismiss this notice button, save button unavailable, you are currently, editor canvas document, editor canvas land. Oh no. Navigation region, dismiss this notice button, list patterns button, templates button, pattern templates, now displaying, log home template editor all way hangout, add new template button, list all archives button, log home button, home writer button, index button. How about index? Surely Seems there's headings plausible. there. <coughs> log home template editor all way hangout, edit button. You are currently in edit mode. To return to the navigation mode, press escape. Now display an index template editor hallway hangout 2023-0. Main landmark, save panel region, open save, editor content region. Group lock, group lock, row 2, group lock, row 1, group lock, row 1. Template part lock, row 1, group lock, row 1. Template part lock, group. Template, group lock, row, group lock, group lock, row, heading lock, row 1, level 1. Oh, there's a heading block. Block navigation structure, block navigation structure table, group not selected, row one, column one, group, close button. Block nav, group not selected, group not selected, heading selected, row four, heading link, block one of three, level three. Yeah, I'm not sure where we would find this, but I don't hear it announced. It's just a heading block. I'm not seeing the document overview tab. I'm not sure why. But when you open the list view, you should have two tabs. The first one, which is the actual list view, and the second tab this should be the document outline. I don't I'm think sure it was. Why it is not there. I'm not sure why. I don't okay. think it was ever added in the site editor. Yeah, it just yeah. says what the title is. That's the H1. It should definitely be indicating heading level there. I mean, that's just really very useful for context to know what's going on there. Did, did you mean visually? I thought I heard it say level three, but maybe. I mean, visually, I yeah. I mean, okay, visually. I mean, it should be like in the list view, it should I indicate heard. what is this, you know, what is this actual item that we're looking at? Perhaps. I'm not 100% sure, but I think in the post editor, there is the document outline. But maybe it was never included in the site editor. 
I believe the document outline was never added to the site either because there were exactly. problems with checking both the template headings and the content headings for those templates that has actually, you know, imported post content blocks. But I, maybe the visualization of the level in the actual list view was removed when we added the text. Because now I, the list view that. has the content of the actual heading. <clears throat> Which I can see as being somewhat useful, but um, it also makes it different from every other item, since every other item just describes what this is. But that one says what it says and does not describe what it is. Um, I so agree. I so like maybe confusing. if we are just going to talk about solutions for two minutes, <laughs> maybe instead of having the the heading icon, which doesn't show any level, we should have the heading level icon and then the text. I think text that would be text. helpful. Might be working. As long as the icon is red. Yes. So none of the block content here is actually red. It's all uh, it's all in the aria label. Uh, I I also it, related to this. There is also work being done to show the content of paragraph and list items in list view. So what we're talking about is likely going to apply to more things. So this is a great thing to follow up on. Um, I'll make sure to drop a, a link to this because if we can get a consistent pattern as we're exploring, you know, you know, let's say there's a paragraph block and it's, you know, what do we want it to read out? <laughs> what do we want the labeling to be? Um, right. I think that'd be good to, to get ahead of. So yeah, I'm, I'm also waiting. <laughs> yeah, I am noticing that. So the, the, the link read, that read, read, read. we visually see as watch, read, listen, that does have an ARIA label that just says heading and then an ARIA described by. So it doesn't, it actually gives slightly better context to a screen reader than visually yeah i mean i would in a perfect world i was waiting on that pr to land for the adding text content for the paragraph because i was thinking at that point it might be a good time to refactor how screen readers interpret all this but <coughs> i didn't want to dive into that work with outstanding work still in progress yeah that's fair i see <coughs> rich has a comment to make yeah, I think a, another idea we can explore is um, just like how right now the image block will have like a little image on at the right side of the list view that kind of helps you identify what it is, but you still see the image icon for visual users so that you, you still have that um, identification there. So maybe we could do something similar or at least explore that and also explore switching the icon to the heading level. Yeah, um, I think one or both or, or one of those two, I think, could, could probably lead in the right direction. Yeah, I mean, I think if the if the icon was the heading level and then the ARIA label provided the heading level as well, then that, that gives us that equivalency. Um, it would just make it a lot easier to kind of understand the hierarchy. And I think exposing that information to a user is extremely important. Uh, we talk a lot about it, and it doesn't have very good visibility. So. All right, what is the next task? Well, uh, the next thing we were going to be looking at is using the command palette. <laughs> so why don't we do that? I forgot the keyboard shortcut for it. <laughs> it's control plus K. Oh, yeah. But I think I would like you to actually navigate to the button. Um, well, this isn't fair because I already know what I'm looking for, but just know that most users in its current state would not. Editor settings region, editor footer region, editor top bar region, navigation region. Oh, past it. Editor top bar region, document tools tool bar, top editing template, index CTRLK button. So and this is why it would be confusing is, of course, because the name of the command palette button is different on every page. Um, there's an open issue for this, and, and Jerry has added a, a PR on it. It's still under discussion. Um, but all right. It, so, it's a button that doesn't say what it does. We'll open it. Dialog, document, command, palette, combo, box, expand it, has auto complete editable search for commands blank. That so why don't we announced. navigate to, say, the, the page portfolio um, template? P A G E. Doesn't tell me how many results that just limited it to. Search for commands page list, sample page one to one. 
Search for commands page list pages 1 to 5. Page writer 2 of 5. Page no title 3 of 5. Page portfolio 4 of 5. And there it is. Now display so, index I want to talk text. a little bit about how that Word, counting Word. worked. Um, I'm not totally clear where those what those counts represented um, since the numbers didn't match what I was seeing. Uh, yes, I believe okay. I saw seven results and it was announcing one of five, two of five, three of five. Oh, there is a technical reason, I think, because some of the suggestions rendered immediately and other suggestions are added at a later time. So the screen reader just gets the first rendering, which was, <laughs> for example, five items. And then two more items were added asynchronously. So visually and de facto, the list is made of seven items, but the screen reader isn't able to update the information and the count is still five. Well, that sounds like a bug that needs to get worked out. Because yes. um, obviously it's going to be fairly confusing to a user if they're being told there are certain things, especially when they hit five of five, they are in no way going to assume there is yet another item That's after it. that. Um, so, you know, the command palette, it was basically functional, but it is short on announcements. It doesn't, you know, not announcing how many results were found is a limitation. And then having incorrect announcing of how many results you're navigating uh, just kind of amplifies that existing problem. Andrea? Yeah, the, the list of suggestions is sort of working with Windows screen readers, but it's completely broken with VoiceOver and Safari. Shocker. It uh, doesn't yeah, work so... at all because there are a few things missing. Unfortunately, screen readers work differently, so it doesn't work at all with VoiceOver. It's a known issue. There are open issues, and the root problem is that to implement this common center, uh, a library was chosen that doesn't satisfy accessibility requirements, and it wasn't tested with all with all screen readers. Uh, I think Alex is updated <clears throat> on the nature of the problem. So the yeah. command palette needs some work. I think is the summary here. I think, uh, I, think, I think the added summary here too is this is why accessibility testing is so important at the start. Uh, actually, the really interesting thing about this is when this was first being implemented, I tried to get there fast enough to actually provide accessibility feedback and it was merged so fast into trunk that I never even had a chance and it was actually broken on Windows. I left the comment after the PR was merged. Hey, this doesn't actually work on Windows. So these are things we need to think about when we're in this rush, 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 ship, ship, ship type deal, because we're going to end up making things very bad for users. This should not be an afterthought. I think that's a, just a general global comment and in, in for a lot of things i mean it's all well and good to move quickly but um it's a it's an ongoing challenge to figure out exactly when and how to get things tested properly but um this this is probably an example of something that m missed a lot of things but the only reason i call it out here is because we've started developing hooks and everything around this third party library so you know, when, when we break our own stuff, it's one thing, you know, generally we have options to fix it, but when we start integrating with a third party library, it's not necessarily so easy to just switch it out and keep back compatibility. Right. So it's really important under these circumstances, especially. Okay. I also think I've it's, we want piece. folks to, to use it too and like extend it. So since it's an extension point, the more we can make it accessible when folks are extending right. it before a plugin author. I also think that's important. Absolutely. Um, I want to be mindful of time just because we are, normally these run for about an hour, um, just to kind of get a sense of where folks are at and um, 
see if we should start wrapping up or I can go through a summary of the list of issues that I've written down or if you want to, if you had more stuff to go through. I would say, I know that there were a couple of things that Alex particularly wanted mm -hmm. to demo. Um, if you still want to do those, Alex, uh, the, you know, the things, some of the stuff with inert and some of the table block stuff. Uh, oh, yes. Right ahead. <laughs> so... Those are technically not really site editor specific because they're, they're just, they're block issues. Um, mm -hmm. But I forget. Oh, I've been so busy this week. I forget what is actually testable on this site right now. Um, uh, I forget what I've, what's going into trunk already. Yeah. And I actually, I didn't, this is, um, I, anyway. I don't know. Well, look at where it is and, and you know where it should be. So you can, uh, check on that. Yeah. So, um, so I think if we go to the comments template, we can view, uh, examples of inert, Yes, that's right. Main landmark, editor, top bar region, document, tools, toolbar, open navigation button. You are currently in edit mode, third view site, open command, navigation, edit button, save but edit, back button, back button, no, add new template, list, all archives button, log home, home writer, index button, page, no title button. Uh, I think we, we have to going? go to patterns. Oh. And, oh, all archives button, add uh, new well, template. Well, actually, no, it, we might be able to see it in in post single. Add list, log home, index, page, page, port, page, writer, page, four pages oh, button, okay. search results button, single post button. That would make sense. Now displaying log yeah. edit button. You are currently in edit mode. To return to the navigation. Yeah, it's in post single. Main landmark. Save panel reach. Block navigation. Group not select. Group not selected. Row one. Group link collapsed. Block one of expanded. Header not selected. Row two. Header link. Group not selected. Row three. Footer not selected. Row. Group not selected. Expanded. Group not selected. Row four. Expanded. Feature image not selected. Stack not selected. Row six. Expand. Group not selected. Row expanded. Title not selected. Row I think eight. You're going to need to go down to the last group in there. Footer um, not. Group not selected. Expanded. One. Act not select group not selected row 13 expanded space or not select yeah, separator there we go space, separator not selected row 15 separate That's comments fine. not selected row 16 Com block comments document so this is the comments block block navig space or not select comment expanded heading not selected row 17 heading link block one comments title not select comment template not comments pagination not comments form not selected row 21 comments form link block 505 level 5 worked on the comments form selected Can anybody figure it out? Figure out what just happened? I know what happened, so I, I'm not going to speak on this one. Oh, but... I, I also know what happened. <laughs> I was wondering if anyone else knew what happened. So what you heard, obviously, is he selected the comments form, and it simply said nothing but selected. Um, and the reason that happened is because this form is specified as inert, which means effectively for a screen reader, it doesn't exist the inert problem yeah yeah so you know it, it's all fine and great that i mean there's been a lot of discussion around this in the last few days and you know it, it's it's great that okay we want this we want people to be able to see the front end from the back end like or the back end from the front end from the back end yes so you know if i insert this block i want to be able to see what this block is going to do when i view the front end what always think, got me, though, is why it was such a problem understanding that we should provide that same experience for everyone. And that's what I've been working to fix this week. Yeah, like, I think, you know, it starts from this idea that, you know, using inert is a way of very efficiently making something non-interactive. And that is actually something we do desire in these previews is for something to be non-interactive. We don't want people trying to actually submit this form or use this form from the back end. However, uh, if we're using a technique that causes it to effectively not exist for one group of people, uh, what we've got is something that is not just inactive, but actually absent. And in that case, we're not giving parity. We're not providing an equal experience for people who are sighted, who can look at this and they know uh, this general context of what is in this form, what does it look like, what are the labels, what are the headings, uh, versus somebody who's using a screen reader who has literally no information about what is present on this particular form. And as we continue to extend things and make things more complex, you know, plugins have long added fields to comment forms, checkboxes for privacy, 
uh, additional fields for information. Uh, we may be needing to actually modify what's in this form in the block editor. And in order to be able to modify it, people need to be able to tell what's there. So I think this is just a kind of a fundamental tool that we need to make sure we're being very careful with. And it's not to say that inert is something we cannot ever use. There are absolutely legitimate cases where something is intended to be removed from interactivity. Um, all of the content behind a modal is kind of the classic example of stuff that you really don't want to be interacting with. It is not what you are working with, um, but it should never be used on something that you actually might interact with. Yes. Uh, yeah. I would like to add that it also defeats the purpose of the editor because the purpose, one of the purposes of the editor is not only to give the ability to edit content and templates <laughs> and blah, 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 but it's also to give uh, a preview of the content that it is as close as possible as to the front end, right? Yeah. So visually here, the editor is providing a preview of the comments, but for screen reader users, there is no preview. All this content is hidden from assistive technology because of the inert usage. So we are really offering a different experience to a different group of users. Vis visual users can see the comments screen readers, users can't. Uh, yes, and this defeats the purpose of the editor. In so, part. I mean, I think that's a fairly, I mean, in my mind, as an accessibility practitioner, it it's a very clear cut case of this is something we should not be using in these models. Um, so. And the there was actually a suggestion that you know, labels could be used and we could write preview of comments form. But that still doesn't tell you like what the form is going to output on the front end. And to follow that up, that wouldn't work on this anyway because enter is actually added in the use block props hook. So that means if there was a description defined there, the description would never be read because this block cannot be focused. Yeah. <laughs> So I think yeah, that's that's that something was, to be aware of. That uh, was keep, an, the, keep your yeah. eyes open for uses of that. It's basically it's it's very <laughs> excuse me. It's very equivalent to discussions about how to hide content um, because there is a profound difference between using something like display none or visibility hidden and using a screen reader text class that takes things out of the visual uh context, but leaves them available for screen readers. And we really need to be thinking about this as very much the same kind of thing. If you're using display none, it's because you do not want anybody to see this. Similarly, if you're using inert, it's because you do not want anybody to use this. And so effectively, anytime you're saying something's inert, you should also embrace the idea that if you put a screen over it and it was invisible, it's fine, it has no impact. And so my argument here is if we're going to use inert on this, that's fine. It just means we also blank out the visuals. And if that's not okay, then using inert is not okay. Yeah, me personally, I think we should create our own use inert hook that just automatically adds display none. <laughs> but that's, that's my colorful way of solving this. It's all about also... making sure these exper experiences are equal. Yes. I will say this has come up in the outreach program where folks sometimes are confused where it's having those previews and having what's there. Um, you know, for example, these like pretend comments that are on here um, has provided some level of confusion for folks. So I think this discussion in general, and I saw that that was part of the discussion on the GitHub issue of both improving the experience. So there is parity and then also talking about that in general of like what it means to have basically preview content um, when you're working within the site editor. So. I think it's relevant to the entire experience for sure. Yep. <laughs> Excuse me. Is there anything else you want to take a look at, Alex? Uh, 
No, I don't think so. I mean, we're uh, a good hour and 15 minutes in now, so I feel like if we if we wrap it up, I think we're doing a pretty good job. So, yeah, does anyone have any questions they just want answered? If not, I do want to mention that I would love, we talked about this at the community summit, and I think it's important that we bring some of this stuff out of the community summit into back into the community. Um, and I know we talked about doing working sessions around like upovers and modals and all that sort of stuff. And potentially maybe even this like focus mode with like the list view and how powerful list view is. Like, I think that could be a good follow-up session. So I would love to just putting it out there, doing something like this again um, in the future and sooner rather than later and perhaps focusing on like a single area, um, like maybe it's talking about inert, <laughs> um, but having kind of these sessions where we can all get into the same virtual room and talk this through and then bring it back into GitHub and bring it back into PRs um, as we can. Obviously we need both async and synchronous, but um, I found this really valuable and I just wanna thank you both for um, taking the time to do this and putting so much thought ahead of time into how to approach um, presenting this stuff. So it's okay, a huge, Sam. Huge help. Yeah. No problem. Thanks for everyone's time. Thank you. Awesome. awesome. We'll see you all on Slack. And this will be recapped um, on make tests. And I have a list of follow-up items. If I miss anything, it's not intentional. Um, it's probably um, me not typing fast enough. So um, <laughs> I can't yeah. imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank all you. Right. All. Well, thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. Later. Thank you.